so i want to teach you factor theorem today factor theorem is a very interesting tool in advanced algebra for math olympiads isi cmi entrances american math competitions and so on so we will learn it as usual using a problem because i think that's the best way to learn you apply the idea in a problem and see it in action okay so this particular problem is from isi bstat bmath entrance 2023 it's a very beautiful problem and we will learn two things using it the factor theorem and the cube roots of unity so let's get started so the first thing that i want to talk about is what the problem says so this is an expression x to the power 10 plus x to the power 5 plus 1 and we want to show that this is divisible by x square plus x plus 1 actually it was an objective problem and the question asked that among the four options which one divides this particular expression and one of the four options was this one of course you can actually divide long divide and check if it is divisible but if you use the factor theorem things become very simple so what does the factor theorem say it says that suppose you have a polynomial f of x which is given as a n x to the power n a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 up to a not so this is a standard way of writing n degree polynomials a n a n minus 1 a not these are constant numbers and x is of course the variable now if you want to check that x minus a this quantity if you want to check if this quantity divides fx then plug in x equal to a in the expression of fx which basically means calculate f of a so replace x by a every time and check if f of a is 0 or not if you plug in x equals to a f of a should be 0 if that happens if and only if that happens then x minus a will divide f of x so i'll quickly run down the proof of this proof means why this happens well if f of x is divisible by x minus a then you can write it as x minus a times some quotient qx now if you plug in x equals to a so if you plug in x equals to a then the right hand side becomes which is 0 and the left hand side you have just replaced x with a so left hand side becomes f of a so since the rhs and lhs are equal therefore f of a is equal to 0 now i want to make a subtle point here sometimes students miss it what i just showed is that if x minus a is a factor then f of a is 0 let me write that if x minus a is a factor then f of a is equal to 
I want you to find an argument which shows if f of a is 0, then x minus a is a factor. So, I want you to show the other direction of the argument. It's very easy. If you can find an argument, put it in the comment section and I'll definitely tell you if I think your comment is right. Okay? Alright, so coming back to this. So, we understand the factor theorem. Now, we need another tool to solve the problem, which is known as the cube root of unity. So, I have discussed it in multiple problems in this particular channel. If you have not seen this before, here is a brief introduction about cube root of unity. It basically tells you how to solve this equation x cube equal to 1. Now, there is a, a theorem called the fundamental theorem of algebra. The fundamental theorem of algebra says whatever is the highest power of x, in this case it is 3, whatever is the highest power of x, the equation has that many roots. In this case, three roots are there. How can you prove the fundamental theorem of algebra? Well, that's a completely different story. Maybe I can discuss with you in some other problem. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, what is the meaning of a root? The meaning of a root is if you replace x by that number, the left-hand side and the right-hand side will match. So, let me just bring the 1 to the left-hand side. So, we have x cubed minus 1 equal to 0. I want to plug in something in place of x such that the left hand side is equal to 0. So, let me factorize this. This is x minus 1 x square plus x plus 1 equal to 0. So, this means x minus 1 is 0 or x is equal to 1 or x square plus x plus 1 is 0. Of course, if, the pro if we want the product of these two things is 0, we want either this one 0 or this one 0 or both 0. Again, we will see that both of them cannot be 0 simultaneously. Either one is 0. So, x square plus x plus 1 equal to 0. Now, we can use the quadratic formula to solve it. It is minus b plus minus root over b square minus 4ac by 2a, which is minus 1 plus minus root over negative 3 by 2. So, these are the two other complex sums. So, these are complex numbers, two other numbers that satisfies the equation. So, we call one of them omega, which is minus 1 plus root over minus 3 by 2, sometimes written as minus 1 plus root over 3 times i by 2. This is i is square root of minus 1. You can think of it like that. And the other one is sometimes written as omega square. And you can simply square this thing and get the other one, which incidentally is minus 1 minus root 3i by 2. Fun fact, if you square this thing, you will get this one. So, one of them is omega, one of them is omega square. So, the three cube roots of unity, these three numbers, 1, omega, omega square, are known as cube roots of unity. And for the purpose of our problem, what is more important is that this equation both omega satisfies this equation and omega square satisfies this equation. In fact, omega square plus omega plus 1 is equal to 0. That is, if I just plug in omega in place of x, it will satisfy. That's why this is the root of this equation. That is the meaning of the solution that we just did. Okay? So, we can also factorize this as x minus omega 
times x minus omega square equal to 0. So, you know, there are three things that you should remember about this cube rules of unity. First, if you plug in omega, you will get omega square plus omega plus 1 equal to 0. It will satisfy that part of the equation. Second thing is, omega cube is 1 because after all, it would satisfy the equation x cube equal to 1, right? So, if you, you can just replace x by omega and it will still work. And the third thing is, x square plus x plus 1 can be factorized as x minus omega times x minus omega square. So, that is all we need to solve the problem that we have at hand. So, the first thing, I'll remind you what we want to show. We want to show, we wish to show that omega square, uh, sorry, x square plus x plus 1 divides x to the power 10 plus x to the power 5 plus 1. That's what we want to show. But what is x square plus x plus 1? Well, it is x minus omega times x minus omega square. This is the thing that I just said here, right? So, I want to show that x minus omega divides x to the power 10 plus x to the power 5 plus 1. I want to show that. And I also want to show that my x minus omega square divides x to the power 10 plus x to the power 5 plus 1. So, how do I do it? Well, I use the factor theorem. So, assume that this is f of x, the function that we are testing. If we can show that f of omega is 0, and f of omega square is 0, then we are done, right? If f of omega is 0, then x minus omega is a factor. If, o, if, f, of, if f of omega square is 0, then x minus omega square is a factor, and we would be done. Well, let's see. What is f of omega? f of omega is, you just replace every x with omega. You replace every x with omega. So, you have omega to the power 10, plus omega to the power 5, plus 1. Now, we know, this is something we already know, that omega cube is equal to 1, because it's a cube root of unity. So, we have omega cubes cube times omega. This is omega to the power 9 times omega is omega to the power 10, plus omega cube times omega square, that is omega to the power 5 plus 1, which is, this is 1, this thing is 1, 1 cube is 1, omega cube is 1 and then 1 cube is 1. So, omega plus omega square plus 1, this is also 1, right? This thing is also 1. So, what is omega plus omega square plus 1? Well, we just found out earlier that that is equal to 0. So, this is 0, exactly how we want it f of omega is 0. That means x minus omega divides f of x. So, I want you to try the second one. That means in the comment section show that f of omega square is also 0. Show me the computation. It's very easy. It's just what we did. But a slight difference is there. So, you can show it in the comment section. Alright. Thank you for joining in today. And I will see you in the next video. Until that time, keep on doing good mathematics and stay well.